Okay, so I want to start out with a fundamental set of concepts that's going to be overarching and it's bigger than psychology. Also, uh, remember that in this course, I want you to dive in and if you find an area of interest, go after it, okay? So this is a big relationship and a set of relationships that we have to understand to understand the, even the existence of psychology. So we're going to study phrenology. We're going to study these pseudosciences that came before. We're going to look at some really great things that came out of psychology. We're going to look at some horrible things that were done in psychology. And so I want you to learn to examine a science and its relationships with the bigger picture of society and technology. So we're going to do this game in class, but if we miss it, I wanted to have an asynchronous version of what we're going over. So let's sit here and let's talk at the beginning about the science. Now, in this case, we are talking about psychology, but let's start bigger than that, okay? Science as a whole, why do we care? Why does it exist? Well, go back to our earliest humans. I'm a historian by trade normally, and, and let's go back and look at maybe the first tool a human uh, being might ever use. So a sharp rock, right? I pick up a sharp rock, I'm going to bash something with it. Uh, there's a scientific understanding there. I could bash something with my hand, but the rock makes me better at it. And if it's sharp, it makes me even better at bashing things. So there's some science there, right? Like it's not formal science the way we might today, but there's probably trial and error science. Maybe there's some basic fundamental understanding of density without the word for it, of um, fracture and knowing that we could have a sharp edge to that stone. Those are concepts that even if we haven't studied them in a purely scientific manner, there must have been some folk or rudimentary understanding of to even pick that rock up. So. Why did I do it? Well, that, that rudimentary understanding, maybe that provided me with access to a technology, sharp rock, good technology. Cool. But, but why did I want it? Well, why am I bashing stuff with a rock? Maybe it's to defend myself from an animal. Maybe it's to allow me to uh, chop a branch down because we've got things on fire over there and I can get, whoa, fire, there's a science, right? So maybe there's a demand from our society for the scientific understanding of sharp? No, maybe that, would they want sharp? Would they care about sharp? Or would the society care that you give it the technology? We want more of technology. We want a better technology. Hey, let's put a handle on my sharp rock. Now I'm stabbing stuff. It's a spear, great innovation technology. We're doing awesome. But then think about this. Like if I, if I went to the spear, or I went to that little sharp ax or, or I, invent, I, I invent that technological understanding, has technology now altered society? Will the society itself ever be the same when we've made these technological jumps? And that could be a hand ax from a paleolithic hunter-gatherer. That could be the invention of uh, you know technology that allowed us to split the atom. That could be the combustion engine. That could have been the steam engine right around 1800. It could be anything that lets us study the brain. Could it be any technology that allows us to move? Consider the impact that the automobile had, right? And, and the ability and the change it had on society. Everything technological that we invent alters society in some way. And we know that science alters technology, but as we enhance our technology, are we gonna change scientific understandings? The invention of the microscope, perhaps. It's a technology that furthers our science. And in, in psychology, we're going to see that constantly. Uh, as we are able to study the brain in new ways, we're able to enhance the science. So now we come to this question, does science alter society? And there's some moral and there's ethical questions. And I think the easiest way to answer it would be in our field of psychology to look at the treatment of anyone facing mental illness. And look at institutionalization that occurred up through the 1960s when society didn't necessarily understand the needs of people. And we can look at how a scientific understanding of mental health can change a society. So we have this constant weaving, inner working relationship between science and technology and society that we simply have to understand. And it's bigger than the field of psychology, but it's definitely going to shape the study. What we're gonna do is we're gonna begin early on in psychological history. We're gonna see what the questions are that people wanted to answer. We're gonna see how they explore them and then we're gonna explore them ourselves and see how modern technology has allowed us to enhance the quality of our field. I'm looking forward to the rest of the course. 
We'll start out here and we'll take off sprinting.